G'day people of Pike Online 2020, my name is Chris and I'm here as one of the techs this year uh, to try and help you get the best out of your presentation. Uh, in terms of how you look and how you sound, um, the quality of that can be influenced massively just by thinking a little bit about the sound, thinking a little bit about the position of your laptop and where the light is in the room and the height and all sorts of things. So join me on this little adventure where myself and my crappy ISO neck beard are going to take you through a few hints and tips. Alright, so first we're going to talk about sound. You'll hear here, I'm just using the sound in my internal laptop. And as a result, you've got the echo of the room, which does get a bit tiresome to listen to and you get some glitches and things like that. Alright, so you can hear I'm talking on my headset at the moment and it's going to reduce some of the room echo and things like that, but it gets... Just the sound is very in your face and full on. It's like yelling into someone's ear because the microphone is sitting right here. Surprisingly, the webcam audio isn't terrible. It is um, gonna sound slightly better certainly than you have in your laptop, but it does tend to do some processing and the audio again gets a bit tiresome to listen to. So this is where we recommend you get a little USB microphone. And you can hear the difference that this microphone makes is quite immense. So one thing, if you do get one of these USB microphones or a microphone in general, just try to lift it up so it's in front of you more. You'll hear that when I'm talking directly into the microphone in front of the machine, the sound quality is gonna be a lot better having it high up than having it somewhere down here. So that's the difference between having it sitting on a desk and sitting right in front of you. And this is just important for listener fatigue. Uh, if you can really get your microphone in a good position, that's, you know, it doesn't even matter if it's slightly in shot, as long as it's nice and close. Of course, you've got to tell your operating system which microphone you want to use and also set the levels, which is a very similar process in all operating systems and it's almost always labeled sound settings. Just note that Windows users will have to open an additional sound control panel. We go to recording, select here the uh, Rode desktop microphone as my default. I know that's my good quality microphone. If I double click on it, it comes up and I can go to my levels. If I turn my levels down, it'll go down. If I turn it up, it'll go up. Now, as far as where to set it, you can see where I've got it at the moment. It's about halfway and that's about right. Because if something exciting happens, like we say, quick basic, and we get super excited, it will jump up to its loud point. So I usually find just touching that halfway for the, the normal talking, but you've got to make sure that you practice presenting and imagine that you're presenting and you're, you know, you're excited. It doesn't matter if you occasionally get a bit of distortion, but you know, try to set it around there and then you should be good. Just check its default. Same with your headphones. If you want to make sure, you know, you've got, it's not going to your HDMI or something like that. Yeah. Make sure your audio is routed back to your headphones. If you're going to be listening back to anything. Mac users have it super easy. You simply go to your sound panel, you select your input, and you can choose what device you want to come in from. So set the volume to be about, you know, that halfway mark on the input level, maybe just a little bit louder. It's a similar process in most Linux distributions. Simply jump into your sound settings, ensure the input's set to your microphone, and just double check those levels to make sure they're at that same just above halfway mark. So we've got our audio sorted out relatively well. What about our camera? Well, this is, if I just open my laptop with my internal camera, this is what I'm getting. Now, the first thing I need to consider is the fact I can open some windows because I've got all the windows shut at the moment. And this will make quite a big difference to the quality of the image. Now you'll see it took a little while to adjust there. Um, but it has adjusted. I am a little bit blown out. So the next step is of course to use a webcam such as a Logitech C920 or 930 I find is a slightly better model. Not all laptops have terrible web cameras but as a general rule anything external is going to be slightly better. So you can see that the Logitech looks a lot better by default. You'll also notice the way I've got it framed. I can frame it up and down. So you don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be framing with your head you know, right down the bottom of the frame. We have this thing called the rule of thirds, which some of you may have studied in photography. And it basically says that if you can get your eyes on the top third line, it's just a more comfortable framing to look at. Talking of the shot and back to my crappy ISO neck beard here, we want to get this so that it's, it's more of a online sort of shot like this or in line with the eyes. That obviously means because my laptop is down here, 
that I'm looking down. So it's ideal if you can, this is where the second monitor comes in as well. It's ideal if your eyes can look straight towards the monitor. So you can see what I've done now is simply raise the laptop up on a tub. I've moved my microphone up a little bit. Um, it's also a better line of sight for your voice if you're speaking, but most importantly, uh, your eyes are running straight towards the camera. And that way when you're talking and you're presenting, uh, you can just look down, glance at your notes, which, you know, if your eye line's looking at some slides, it's not too bad. But then if I look back at the camera, you can see here that it, it works quite well. Now, my background is still a little bit of an issue. I've got some uh, folders and ISO bits stacked up in the background there that are, you know, I could probably tidy that up a little bit. Um, you know, put some stuff in the background that's uh, maybe a little bit uh, fun or, you know, you probably don't want to put too much stuff there, but I could potentially put some figurines or something on the little shelf up the back here. Now, of course, you can go a step further. So this would be an example of using a DSLR. Um, I've just got it mounted sitting behind my camera and you can see it does offer a little bit of quality advantage. You know, compared to the webcam, if you look at that as a, you know, $150, $200 Logitech webcam versus this camera, which $4,000 worth of lens on it and the body's worth about $5,000, because we're in a wide mode, isn't a huge amount of difference. Now, any web camera is going to struggle in low light. And this is a thing. If you are presenting at night, you will need to set up some lights. But do not do this. Do not just point a couple of ultra bright point source lights at yourself because it will look terrible. What you want to do instead is bounce the light the most you can. So pick a wall, especially if you're in front of a, a white surface or something you can put, you know, paper over or some old posters, you know, turn the other way around. Bounce a bunch of light onto yourself from behind. Just get as many lights as you can and bounce the light back and it'll generally look pretty good. So one other thing you can see here is your second monitor. Uh, ideally, if you can have a second monitor, it means you can have your presentation purely focused on the screen you're talking to, and you can use a second monitor to check that your presentation is streaming correctly. Let's talk about presentations, though. With your presentations, there's a few things you can do that are really going to help uh, make the experience for somebody watching it through a video stream a lot better. One of the things is avoiding having lots of small text and try to keep it to shorter, larger blocks of text that you can then expand on. Ensure that you make your presentation in the widescreen format in the 16 by 9 ratio because this is what we're broadcasting. Now here's something you might not have thought of. You are probably not sending your system sound. So if you have got anything that makes audio, such as a video file or music file or sound effects, please make sure you tech check this in advance because it will be silent on the day and very awkward. Uh, and it's not something that we can easily access on your computer uh, without setting it up in advance. So again, tech check anything that has system sound. Something that you can be fooled with is thinking, well, everyone's sitting close to their screen. I'm going to run a terminal window and do some demonstration. But keep in mind, if you're running a high resolution like a 4K screen or 2680 wide or something that's big, and someone is watching a stream that's dropped down to, say, 720p, they're not going to be able to see anything. So make sure that you configure your fonts to be extra big and boofy on your screen. It might look ridiculous when you're working on your side, but I can guarantee that for the people watching in the stream, it's going to be a much better experience. Anything you're doing with a tool and a, a GUI-based thing, you know, make sure that you set your computer monitor. This is a trick if you've got two computer monitors. Set your second monitor to be a much lower resolution. And practice as well. Make sure that your, your GUI programs actually support those lower resolutions. I would recommend a resolution maybe no wider than 1440 wide. A lot of the time I use uh, 1280 by 720. And 720p might sound like it's super low or 1280 by 800. But when you're watching on the other end and you've got even a 1080p screen and you've got a chat window down the side and the room windows down the other side, it might be that they're watching a much smaller version. Now, it still looks fine. You can have software that's sort of crunched down. We look at it all the time. Certainly, if you've got a program like Zoomit as well, that's a bit of a, a classic app for PC. If you look up uh, Sys Internals, there's a, a little tool where you can go Control and 1, and it'll just zoom wherever your mouse is. And there's also equivalent tools for Mac and for Linux that allow you to zoom into your screen 
and talk about specific things on your stream. Now keep in mind as well, the more motion and the more craziness that you have on your screen while you're demonstrating, the more that's gonna trip up the H.264 and HEV encoding. So just go slow, take that little bit of extra time to demonstrate things and to hover and to wait on parts of the screen, especially if you're scrolling around, you just wanna let the encoders settle out. It shouldn't be too bad, but this is Australia and you never quite know what's gonna happen. Ah, don't we love bashing the old MBN, if you've even got the MBN. All right, well that should be enough to get us through. At the end of the day, even simple things like getting your eye line right for the camera and making sure that your audio is as clear as possible, whether that be using a headset mic or getting something like a USB mic, this will all lead to a much better experience for everybody who's watching. And remember, we are here as your team to try to make this show go on no matter what. And so on the day if something happens, don't panic because we are here in case something's disappeared. Yeah, I did. So book in your tech check and that'll allow us to test your bandwidth, test your video signal, test your audio quality. And if there's anything tricky, work like media assets or anything, we'll work through that with you because we're here to help as techs. All right, take care and we'll see you at Pike Online 2020.